We are gonna. All right, so good morning. Welcome again to Texas Power Up. Um, the market might be, you know, slightly chilling off a bit, but these Texas temperatures certainly are. I think it's like 100 degrees everywhere we live right now. Um, however, if we stay focused, it could also be our hottest year, right? So that'd be cool. Um, we have 20 weeks, 20 to zero, uh, starting next Monday to get our clients under contract. So starting next Monday, we have 20 weeks left in the year, which is exciting. Um, on one hand, 20 weeks is not a long time, on the other hand, it's a really long time. Like we could definitely make a huge amount of impact for the rest of this year, right? The year is definitely not over. Um, so this morning, let's start with our shout outs and our gratitude. Um, if you click the emoji button on the bottom of your screen, you just click your hand up and I will call on you. And while you're thinking about your gratitude or your shout outs, um, I'm gonna shout out a couple people. I'm going to give a, some gratitude. I'm going to give gratitude to Mary in Austin. Um, she's taken so many staff members, potential staff candidates um, through the interview process in the last 30 days. It is so much work and she has been so positive and detailed and mission focused. Um, and I also am grateful for Fatima on our team in Austin because um, She's really hardworking, but she also steps up to the plate with her other passion, which is photography. And whenever we have a team event, she's always like raising her hand like that she'll take our pictures. And it's so, so sweet. So I really, really appreciate that. Casey. I see yes. It. So uh, I recently went on vacation and I wanted to shout out some of our leaders who stepped up and really uh, took over while I was out. I want to shout out Beth. Uh, who led a power up, Kaylin, who led a power up, uh, Joseph and Daniel, who were leading wrap ups. And obviously you, Adelina and Mary, really uh, just really uh, killing it for our agents, constantly providing value. Uh, very grateful to be where we are and uh, excited to be back. There we go. I'm back. Um, and welcome back. Montana is a great place. If you are ever looking for a great place to visit, you just, um, there's a, is there a direct flight? We can go to like Jackson Hole from most of these or somewhere, right? Uh, Bozeman was the Bozeman. direct. This one. Yes. Yep. So like, if you really just want to get away um, and you want to feel like you're maybe not in America, uh, Montana will do that. It's just beautiful. It is everything that it's cracked up to be. Every time you go, I'm always jealous. So I love that. Um, hi, May. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Maurice DeRay, even though he doesn't have his camera on. Um, anyway, sorry, that's somebody else coming out of me. Um, and he is just, he, he's, the way he's shown up the last couple of months is just absolutely amazing. He started attending uh, script practice every session and, um, He's, uh, I think he's, he's almost at 2 million pended in the last like 45 days, uh, pended and closed in the last 45 days. And uh, I'm just so proud of him. And he's just displaying uh, leadership, grit, and just awesomeness all the way around. Thank you, Maurice. Hey, I love that. That's awesome. This is, uh, this is the only market he knows. So I look at him go. I love that. Right on. Brandon. What's up? I want to uh, just give a shout out to the San Antonio partners. Um, we've been dealing with some uh, life stuff, some COVID stuff, some health stuff. And and through all of that, uh, everybody's business is still up. And we hit a record number of pendings uh, recently. And so the second shout out goes out to Matt, our operations coordinator. Um, we've been making these evolutions, 15 pendings a month, 20 sometimes. And then we dip a little bit, right, as we're taking more listings and just growing our business and scaling uh, and he's he's been there every step of the way to learn and grow and do the things that he has to do to help us uh continue to drive that production and so it's just a really good example of grit this time of year and uh proof that even through the stuff that life is going to throw at us we can still show up for our families and for our business partners so uh it's been great really great to watch and i'm very grateful for them i love that how many pendings right now we're at 30. Some of those are starting to come off the board. Yeah. So we had put up 20 a couple of times. I say we, they, um, and we hit 30 the other day. So that's pretty cool. 
and then listings were we're up a hundred and something percent year over year and i'm not much of that production so this literally is them growing in their business sticking with it you know being told no a lot to get a few yeses and uh they're they're pushing to hit their their goals and we still have a lot of time left this year so i'm excited for them i love it great message this morning life will continue to happen um, life will continue to happen this weekend and next week and a month after and next year and 10 years from now, like that will not, like, there will never be a perfect time to do anything. There will great message this morning. Great message. I appreciate those, uh, gratitudes. Um, I, I have two agents that I wrote down that I wanted to shout out, um, just because it, it's really relevant to, you know, um, what we do every day. Um, and uh, I want to shout out Caitlin Wells in Austin. She took a $900,000 listing from an internet lead from two years ago. Um, she followed up with them 23 times. I counted 23 times, 23 times. So if your follow-up looks like one to two times, five times, and you're like, ah, I must just not be a great agent. Caitlin Wells is one of our top agents. 23 times to follow up, got her $900,000 listing, congrats. And then I also wanna shout out Kaylin and Yvette in Austin. They signed just this week. Uh, nine different parcels of land for over 1.67 million. And the story here is this was from Circle Prospecting on our seller contact day. So if number one, if, if Circle Prospecting isn't in your job description right now, you are probably missing out on listings. Um, or uh, if you're not plugging into like prospecting days, call nights, inventory creation days, man, like the energy of everyone doing it together really produces results. So shout out to them. I love when doing the work pays, right? Feels really good. Brendan, back to you. Hey, so you reminded me of something. Uh, shout out to them and um, doing it together. Iron sharpens iron. I've been waiting to give Rob the shout out, but he's on vacation this week. So he's going to have to watch the recording if he's not watching from <laughs> Mexico right now. Um, but earlier this year, uh, just for, so you guys know, our median price point in San Antonio is about 340, 350. And it didn't used to be that even last year. So we're climbing. Um, but we've had some closing 700, 800, 900. We've been in there. Uh, but in January, uh, Alicia on the listing side off market, it was like 995 or something. So we we're pushing that seven figure uh, and Daniel double ended that with her. So at the time that was the record, right? Uh, teammates doing that off market, coming together, paying attention to power up, you know, making deals happen. <clears throat> but last week, Rob closed our largest listing. It was an expired at right at a million. And that same day, Andrew and Alicia pended a different property at a million. Right. So these, we notice these trends continue to happen at the same time with other people on the team, uh, even though they weren't connected on that deal, that type of energy and rhythm, we, we tend to latch onto that and we're, we're pushing it forward. So uh, doing it together matters, obviously, um, but that sharpen uh, iron sharpens iron part of our values, it, it stands out. I love that. I love that. Okay. I'm so glad you said that. This is like not in my like little script thing that I'm talking about today, but I'll give you one thing. In one of my coaching sessions this week with one of our agents, um, we were talking about having momentum, right? Um, momentum is such a big thing. You can have negative momentum and forward momentum. Like it is real, right? Like you all know people who everything bad happens to them, right? They have negative momentum, right? And then you have people that you know who like, gosh, everything good just seems to happen to them, right? And we almost buy into this whole concept that they just must be lucky. Um, and, and, and some of it is luck, right? Like, and we also create our own luck, right? Through our mindset, through the work we put in. Um, but we were talking about how important the month of August and the month of September are. That August uh, and September, and then you start October as well. That like when you have momentum in August, September, October, what happens is November, December, and January are gonna be strong months for, for you. The reason for that is nobody wakes up the day after Thanksgiving and they're like, oh my God, Brandon, I think I'm gonna buy a house. Like that just doesn't happen. Like they're not in that mindset. The people who have closings November, December, January every year, it's because they already started this momentum with these buyers and these sellers in August, September, October. And therefore, these people are making decisions. They're not starting the process in November, December, and January. So I just want to encourage you this morning, speaking on like momentum, like 
like no matter the market, there's going to be what, like, I don't know in your area, but there's probably like 10,000 homes sold a year, 20,000, 30, 60,000. Like none of us are even close to that. So we know the market's out there. We know people are buying and selling. So let's get ahead of it. Okay, but for real, to our topic, um, we're gonna switch gears, get into our topic. Who has read Atomic Habits by James Clear? Oh, look at those hands, I love it. Uh, it's an excellent book. Um, my, my daughter, uh, when I was going over my script uh, for this power up, she was like, oh, I read Atomic Habits and like 14 year olds read Atomic Habits. So if you haven't, uh, be the 14 year old who reads Atomic Habits, cause man, they're coming for our jobs. I'm telling you these kids, Eight years from now, we're all going to have to work harder. They're, they're smart little kids. But here's what he said in it. Um, many people are not ready for their lucky break when it comes to them. Develop your skills, study your craft, save some money, build a network before you need it, lay the groundwork. The prepared person is positioned to benefit from unexpected opportunities. So um, what do you think are some unexpected opportunities that this coming market brings us? Open question. A uh, higher chance to take listings, higher chance to get your buyers under contract that have been waiting with the inventory push now. All right. Higher market share. Yeah, higher chance to take listings and to get buyers moved on properties. Yeah, better opportunity for investors and developers. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down less agents to compete with. I mean, all of our agents are going to make it. would like that for everybody else. They, could, they should be on our team, right? Um, I put less pressure on commission because less agents are discounting their commission. So that's a positive, right? There's always a positive. Um, respect, right? Clients respect agents who they feel can guarantee them success in this kind of market, right? So the respect meter goes up. So um, the market has been unexpected lately, right? But it also comes with unexpected opportunities. So um, today we're going to focus on how to maximize the, this market that we're in. Um, and I think it's the difference between having an okay year and a really great year. So um, we have Sarissa from Dallas. Um, I saw her. I'm going to spotlight you. I'm going to spotlight all my uh, people. So then that way it's easy for us. Sarissa from Dallas. We've got Casey from Austin. Um, and we also have Jim from El Paso. And if you guys don't know Jim yet, um, Jim is a really cool dude. Uh, you may know his wife. She was, do, she did one of our power-ups on, it was one of your favorite power-ups. You guys sent me so many messages after it, which was really cool. So Veterans Day is coming up um, and uh, we might have Chastity come back, but um, these guys are really cool and they have, uh, they have stuff to share with us this morning. Particularly, we're talking about anything regarding negotiating or anything regarding expectation setting in this kind of new market. And anything that comes to mind uh, that you guys want to share with us. And then also, if you guys are hearing it and you're in the audience, I know sometimes we use Thursdays to like get ready for stuff while we're listening in, which is awesome. But just keep your ear out for like, what's that one thing that's going to change your business? Because all you need is one thing. It's a series of adjustments. Like if your plane takes off from Dallas and is going to New York, but you went five degrees to the right, you're ending up in the Atlantic Ocean, not New York. So like these little things, they may seem small, but it's, but this is a long career for us. So these little things become big things. And so uh, who wants to start off? Anybody have anything that they want to start with? I'll go. There we go, Sarissa, ladies first. Okay, so I was thinking about this. I was going to totally go in a different direction yesterday. And then I woke up and I was like, duh. Um, I, I, I say that because when I first started thinking about how did I learn like negotiations, it, it really started to like come to um, like, oh, how do I say it? Who's been to win, make, give? Let's start there. Anybody? Okay. Win, make, give is like the best thing ever. And if you guys ever get to go in person, if they do it again soon, please go. At win, make, give, they had a VIP event 
and I snuck in the room. I'm going to be, yeah, I, I did. Um, anyways, I snuck in the VIP event and I will pay for that from now on because it was so worth it. And um, what they talked about in the VIP event then gave actual businesses and websites and um, homes that he had purchased in the past. And he put us in these case studies and we had to decide, he gave us like very few facts on each one. And we had to come up with like what we would do to negotiate on that deal. So one was a business, a website, a house, all these things that he had purchased before. And we were like throwing out our, our ideas. And at the end of the day, it was just like gut check because every single one of them was not negotiated how we thought it was gonna be negotiated. My takeaway um, that has changed the way I think about negotiations is that we really have to, as much as possible, be quiet, and listen to the other party. We have to stop talking, we have to ask questions, and we have to really get to the heart of what is actually important to that other party. Um, and I know in a lot of cases, we're actually dealing with a real estate agent, we're not dealing with the actual, the owner, but as much as possible that we can build a relationship with that real estate agent, have a happy, upbeat demeanor when we're, when we're talking, and so they know we're gonna be enjoyable to work with. Um, not come out of the gates being like some hard, hard A, you know, um, that nobody actually wants to work with and, and come from a place of like, what's important to your seller? I know price, obviously price, but like, what else is really important to them? Um, in the past couple of years, we have not had to negotiate. They've basically said, here's the terms we want. And we just have to like tell our buyers, this is what you have to do. And in this case, it's important that we obviously are fighting for our clients and there's opportunities right now to actually win big for our buyers and, and for our sellers right now. And if we can ask good questions and really get to the heart of what is important to that person, uh, that will go far. I'll give you a couple of examples that happened this week. Um, I was working with a couple of clients who are purchasing a property for their, their mother. She is quite a lot, you know, she's, she's older. They are having to help her with this purchase. Well, we happened to, um, walk into the house and the little old lady who lives in that house. So similar situation, buyer and seller, um, was there because she couldn't leave. And, um, she had lived there and raised her kids there. My point is we were able to play that in our favor because we were able to play into the emotion and the understanding of what those that family was going through and think about if that was us, what would we like to offer? How can we make negotiations less painful for their family? Because the, the kids were the ones having to make decisions. How do we make it easier on everybody? And they ended up choosing us. We were in multiple offers even in this market because we understood them. We asked questions. Um, we found out, does she have a home to go into yet? Do we need to give her more time? Blah, blah, blah. You get the point. So we were able to ask a lot of questions and understand them. Um, on the flip side, I lost a $3.7 million buyer for my listing this week. And so I'm going to tell you what not to do. Stop negotiating over text. I killed it, you guys. I completely killed this deal because I was being impatient and negotiating over text. I did not understand the real estate agent or her or the clients that were purchasing. And I simply came in like, this is what we want. Why are you even wasting our time? And I was not coming from a place of understanding and contribution and not willing to just pick up the darn phone and get to know someone. Mm. So um, if there's anything you can learn from what to do, what not to do, what Ben taught us, it's ask a lot of questions, be quiet, um, try to put yourself in their shoes and really understand what it actually is that's important. Sometimes it's legacy. Sometimes it's whatever. And um, we really, that's thats what I would take away from myself and my own learning this past week. So that's what I would take away from myself. Um, I'm curious, just really quick on, um, as you were talking about it, do you have any like tips on, like when you say stop, negotiating over text, like where's the line between like what people should text and what they should actually pick up the phone for? Like, do you have like any like coaching on that? Because we did, we did come out of a market where 
everybody really got used to texting because you couldn't even really get in touch with an agent sometimes. No, like, nobody wanted to answer your phone. It was too hot, like moving too fast. Yes. And then also like, because of that like culture, right? We also, everything was done over text for sellers because everything mm-hmm. was easy. And now we're taking a lot of the same approach and it's via email and via text. I see very few phone calls and a lot of back and forth on text and emails. Do you have any coaching around that? Do you see any of that? Yes. Do you remember any of that? Yes. And this actually takes me back to my pharmaceutical days when I was in a very high um, corporate environment. We had to take training every single year called write, write, meaning write, R-I-T-E, write, R-I-G-H-T. I'll put it in the chat. Write, write. You want to get sued? You want to kill a deal? You will not you know, think about simply said, we need to be analyzing every single thing that we put out there. Um, I said one thing that was sarcastic, did not come across sarcastic over text. It came across insulting. And um, the other agent probably screenshot it and sent it to the client, not even realizing that the client was now going to be offended by what I said. I think I jokingly was like, girl, why are they even looking at houses they can't afford? And like that, I mean, duh, Sarissa, duh, like, you know better. So I know better and I still did it. And so, um, so yes, anything that could be either, uh, I've had to, I'm not going to call anybody out, but like, I've had to undo what some of our par- agent partners have written because they were in a moment of frustration and we've had to clean up some messes that could have been really bad. You cannot hear emotion, sarcasm, silliness, any of that over text or email. And in a lot of cases, so yes, I think it is extremely important to just have that kind, helpful, amicable voice when you are talking to someone. And the less honestly we put in writing, the better until it's actually a thing. Hey, we got off the phone and this is what we talked about. Um, one, two, three, here's the next steps, blank, right? Um, Because of what it can do to get us in trouble. So yeah. I love that. I love that. Email and text to confirm. Email and text will get you in trouble when tonality, like think, uh, okay, real estate is highly emotional, right? We all agree on that. The reason it's highly emotional is because people are moving for a reason, right? Like something very positive is happening or something not so positive is happening, right? Uh, promotion, divorce, new baby, uh, death in the family. Like, there's a million things happening, right? And think of it this way. Like if somebody, if your mom had died, would you text your family and say, mom died? I don't know. I wouldn't probably call my sisters, uh, text my sisters and be like, well, mom died. I mean, like, how are they supposed to take that? Like, this is a very stressful time, right? The market is very stressful right now. So I would definitely, um, gosh, especially because we're salespeople, we are good on the phone, you guys. Now we don't have confidence sometimes because it's like, oh, they don't want to hear bad news. It's like, well, you're, you don't control like the market. You're, you're just facilitating. Um, anyway. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Sarissa. You're amazing. I want to go to Jim really quick. We haven't heard from Jim, so definitely want to go to you. Uh, Jim, you're in El Paso, yes, sir? Absolutely. Okay, so El Paso, um, and you guys do a lot of business, a little bit of business. Kind of catch us up with like what we should know about you guys. Well, so for us in general as the PCS team, so we're, we're a fairly small team. We have five agents. Uh, we've helped 150 families this year. We're on track to break a little over 300. Um, we, we do have a pretty good size admin team. We have four admin that support those five agents and we have a, a brevity VA. So we, we really focus on the admin support so that way the agents can focus on their five primary tasks, right? Lead generate, uh, show homes, write contracts, negotiate repairs, have the closings. If I can get the, the agents focused on those five tasks, we'll take care of everything else. So that way it's as streamlined as possible. You guys may know Chas. She is the personality, the butterfly, she is my better half. Um, I was joking, I'm the other half. Um, Cause she says I complete her and I'm like, okay, I get it. But no, absolutely. So our, our biggest thing that we've gotten, we've seen is and a lot of great information and I love Atomic Habits, but if you guys haven't read Never Split the Difference, 
That's a phenomenal book. And one of my biggest takeaways on Never Split the Difference was about having the clarity of no, right? The power of no. Because we're salespeople, we are ingrained to get yeses. That's all I want, right? It's, you know, do you like the house? Do you love your family? Do you have a dog? Do you want to hire me? Right? I want yes, 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 yes. I want to pre-program you. But the power of no is where you'll actually find the information you're looking for, right? I can ask a seller, do you think we would have a better opportunity to get buyers if I held an open house in your house every day for eight hours and you got to be gone? And they might say, well, yeah, you probably do have a better opportunity. But if I never ask the question, well, do you want me to have an open house every day for eight hours a day? Right. I, I'm missing the mark on what the relationship with that client can be. Um, and so that's where we've looked that when we're building the rapport, when we're having the negotiation conversations, I get better clarity. I get more answers when you as a client can tell me no than when you just agree with something I'm saying. Wow. Is that okay? Huh. I actually, I, I really like that. Um, like, are you seeing your agents using this? Um, and what is that? What could that look like in a day-to-day -day format? Yeah, well, so day-to-day, -day, it, it's just asking, right? So what side of town do you want to live on? The house you were looking on, uh, the house you were looking at was on the east side. So as opposed to switching your dynamic with the first conversation, so, hey, you were looking on the east side, I'm going to start sending you homes on the east side. It's really just asking, you were looking on the east side, is that the area of town you want to live in? Right? And, and they could say, oh, no, I was just looking because it looked like a really cute house, or hopefully they say no. Have you ever seen the movie, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? I don't know if you guys have ever seen I that. I haven't, movie. no. So old school movie. Um, there's one part at the end of the movie where, so I'm spoiler alert. You guys probably aren't going to watch it anyway. But like the killer is there. He sees her and he invites her in the house. And she knows he's the killer. But the social dynamic of us being able to tell somebody no, because when we're uncomfortable with people, we can't tell them no. So she literally goes in the house with this guy knowing he's the killer. Every TikTok viral video you see of somebody saying, hey, here's my dogs, can you watch them? And they just walk away. Why do you think strangers have all these, you know, you can do so much more with strangers because of that social dynamic. They're not comfortable enough to tell you no. It takes a relationship to be able to tell somebody no. Wow, wow, wow. So that's, it's kind of crazy, especially, okay, so if I think about sellers, for example, I'm you know, I, I go to a listing appointment. I don't yet really have a big relationship. And I think sometimes that can become hard to, you know, they want, you know, 600 and the house is really worth 550 and we'd be lucky to list that at 549 to get offers. Right. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, well, no, Mr. Seller. Um, well, you're so it, it's not necessarily me having to say no. I want them to say no. Right. So I want them to say, OK, listen, so that's what listen. I wanted to say. OK, yes. Take us down that road. Yeah, absolutely. So in that situation right there, it's OK, Adeline, I get it. So you want to list the house at 650. The market analysis and everything we have from the comparables that show that the house is priced, I can have an appraiser come out at 550. So as long as we understand that the appraiser is going to come to 550 and anything above that has to be guaranteed through the appraisal, is that something you'd be OK with? Well, I mean, Jim, you're a great agent. I, I believe you can make it happen. Oh, absolutely. I can make all kinds of things happen. And it's, it's like, do you ever remember the, the movie Aladdin, right? You, you've yeah. seen the movie Aladdin, right? And you remember he's like, infinite cosmic power. We're going to be the living space. I can be the most amazing negotiator in the world. But if I have nobody on the other side of the table to negotiate with, I'm just kind of by myself. So we have to put it at a pricing point where I'm going to get the multiple offers. I'm going to get the competition and I'm going to get people that are actually fighting for your home. So is that something that you'd be interested in? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you should already have buyers for my house. I mean, it's a great house, Jim. I mean, we just walked through it. It's an absolute wonderful and amazing house. So we do have buyers that are looking in this area and neighborhood. But the thing with those clients is we want to make sure that the house is going to actually fit the value of what they're looking for. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. Okay, absolutely. So let's do this. Let's list the house at 550. 
We'll see what offers we come in. If you don't like an offer, you know what you always have the ability to say? No. Absolutely. And we'll keep working for you. <laughs> I like that. That is, you're very good at this, Jim. Uh, very nice. I like that. I hope you guys wrote down that very last bit there, right? Love that. I love that. Man, we uh, love to have you back on, Jim. You are, I know chastity is the butterfly, but uh, I mean, you're, you're a secret little weapon over there. Uh, no, no, no. I, expires is our thing. That, that's okay. well, that's my right. thing. Okay, so on that topic, uh, with the market changing, like, because the, mm. okay, like six months ago, a year ago, like, you know, like you could promise people the sun, moon, and the stars and probably get it for them. Are you changing anything on expires? Like your approach uh, on the phone? Is there anything you want to share with us on that? I know it's not even our topic, but since you are mm -hmm. good at that stuff. No, no. So expired is, is, so it's about the rapport building, right? So when we make our expired phone calls, we have what we call a script map. Um, okay. And it's because I don't want you to feel constrained to the verbatim aspect of the script. So I just give you a map and say, I want you to, you know, kind of get to these things. But as with any conversation, you have an objective. And, and I always tell, so on an expired phone call, it, your objective is to set the appointment. And so if I call and say, hey, Adelina, this is Jim with the PCS team, Power by Place. Um, you had your home on the market 42 days, it's expired, meaning it's no longer available. What are your plans for the house? If you say, Jim, look, I got an appointment, I gotta go, can you come to the house today at five? You know what I'm gonna say? Absolutely, I'll be there at five, right? I, what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna mess up the appointment by continue trying to talk. I'm not gonna say, hey, well, real fast, can you tell me this? I'm gonna get that, hey, this is a good contacting uh, number for you, great, I'll send you any, a, a text a little bit later for your email and we'll continue chatting, right? I'm not gonna mess that up. So with the script map, the way that we develop our expired calls is we really ask about you, you know, in the beginning. So, hey, if you sold your home, where would you go? And then one of the questions we love to follow up with that is what's waiting for you there? I like right? that. Because it, it's, it's more than just, oh, well, is that a new job or what's, what, you know, what's, what are you going to do when you get there? No, no, no. What's waiting for you there? I want to put it in that frame and that perspective for you. Uh, and then we ask you. You know, how soon did you want to be there? So I'm going to ask you everything about you. How did you pick the last agent? Um, was there anything they did that you loved? Was there anything they did you wish they could have done better? Um, you know, so I'm really when our expired script map, I'm going about you, 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 you for about seven questions. And then finally, at the very end, that's when I just say, hey, listen, uh, what if I told you that in the last 42 days that your home is on the market, our team helped 55, 50 families buy or sell our home, you know? Uh, our days on market average is less than six days, and that's by design, right? Is this worth a 15-minute conversation for us to get together? I love that. When you said what's waiting for you there, do you know that my emotion perked up? Like, I felt it in my heart. I was like, uh-oh, he wants to know about me. And I'm not even an emotional person. Like, Absolutely. I am logical. Um, so that was, I really like that. Okay, I'm going to invite you back so you can do um, your expired like script map with us, like for real, for real. That is- Oh, awesome. absolutely. Thank you. That's, okay, awesome. What a win. Um, thanks, Jim. Uh, Casey, I'll go to you. What, yeah. you've been doing this for a little while. Tell us, tell us the things. What do you want to share with us? Yeah, for sure. And I love what everyone shared here. And I think there's like a common theme of like listening and knowing- uh, what's up with people? You know, this is uh, we've been saying in Austin for a couple months now. Uh, this is the kind of market that it's not going to drive motivation. It's the kind of market that reveals motivation, right? And so we're not going to have a lot of people who are saying, "Hey, I heard the market is crazy. Let's try our hand at it." Right? These are this is a market where we have to really identify motivation and we're going to have to really lean in and help our folks. So instead of talking more about the negotiation side of the, the assignment this morning, I wanted to talk about the expectation setting um, and more maybe even like client management, right? And so uh, a lot like what Sarissa and Jim have said, uh, we need to really dig for motivation. We need to know what's making the person on the other side tick, right? Uh, and a lot of times that's with our own client. You know, even, even when we have a signed listing agreement, sometimes we can go deeper with that story, right? And get an idea. As a matter of fact, it's really powerful to be able to summarize their story and be able to sort of tell their future, right? We're, we're projecting a, a future for them. And we want to make sure that- What would that sound like? Just so that we know, like, what, what would that sound like? Yeah, so it would sound like, um, 
you know, Adelina, I, I'm really excited. Thanks so much for sharing with me about, you know, what's going on in your world and uh, why your home didn't sell the first time. Uh, I can already think of two or three ways that we're going to make things different this time so that we can get you to Dallas so that you can be with your family and so that you can have some equity left over after you sell here and really have a nice nest egg and set you up for the future. How does that sound to you? I like it. Okay. Right. So we're telling that story. We're projecting what that looks like. Um, and then I think that after we do that, once we really have that like motivation tied down, then we come in with care and candor. Right. And we're saying, look, I really care about you. And we, this market is a little different. We really need to make sure that uh, we're on the same page uh, because it's not the same market that we've had. And so then we go into some stats. We tell them, you know, what days on market are looking like. We tell them, you know, for our buyers, we tell them uh, what the offer scenario is looking like. You may have heard that interest rates are up, that the uh, the economy is crashing. You may be expecting a great deal. It's still a seller's market. We're still going to have to be competitive. We may not be in a 15 offer situation. Uh, thank God Sarissa's still seeing multiple offers. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, but in for, yeah, for a lot of our buyers, we're not, right? Which that's great, but they still have to bring a competitive offer so that that seller is not thinking in the back of their mind, could we get better, right? And so those are the kind of expectations we're setting. And then I think with every conversation that we have, we want to forecast the next two, three, four steps so that that client knows what's next. They know what to expect. And we're, we're kind of walking them down that story that we're telling so that we sort of have this, uh, this like narrative for this transaction, for this client, and, and we're helping them do that. So I, I think that if we're setting expectations that way, and where everyone feels like they're on this journey with us and they know where they're going, uh, that can be really valuable so that when things, uh, you know, when there are variables in the, the transaction, when there are variables in the relationship, right, things happen, it's the real world, uh, that sets us up to be able to have more rapport built with the client. We can go back to that motivation and, and really, you know, we've gone deep. Rather than I wanna sell my house and get to Dallas, right? Really what we want to know is, hey, let's set you up for the future, right? Let's make sure that you have security so that you feel like you are making wise decisions and you've made a good investment here in Austin and you're going to go make a great investment in Dallas. So I, I think that's more valuable, more powerful than just, I want to sell my house, right? Um, now, <laughs> if someone tells us, hey, uh, can you meet me can you sell my house? We're going to tell them yes and get to the appointment. Like Jim was saying, uh, we're not going to talk past yes on the phone. Uh, but this is stuff that can happen throughout the entire uh, relationship. I think sometimes we forget to continue down that like motivation road when we're already working with someone, right? You can still learn about them. You can still ask them questions. Um, and as we're talking to them, we want to get to know them even more. Uh, we can build rapport and sell at the same time. So that's that's like the setting expectations side of all of this. And then the last thing that I want to touch on is also building urgency. Um, you know, the, the, we are going to see a lot of buyers who found the perfect house. And it's it's perfect for exactly what they're saying they want. It's a great price. Actually, everything is like perfect from our perspective. And they want to think about it, Right. They, 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 they're not sure that they want to pull the trigger and we're going, oh my gosh, this is the house. This is, it. I've done my job. We're, we're good. We're, we're great. What, you know, and we're like freaking out because they really need to pull the trigger because this is it. And if they miss out on this one, we don't know that another one is going to come. Uh, but because there's so many options out there, right? They, they want to think about it. They want to talk about it, all that kind of stuff. And so I think that there's, there's two things we need to remember because sales is a service, right? We need to highlight the benefits of their desired outcome and help them remember, hey, remember how we were talking about you're going to be able to, you know, have more space for the kids. Like, this is it. This is what you were saying you wanted. And I don't know if we're going to find another one like this, like this is, this is it. And, you know, honestly, because this is number one on your list, it's probably number one on someone else's list too. You know, I, I know that there's a lot of options out there, but there's a reason we didn't look at those. This is it. This is the one for you. And so 
I just want to know, do you want to sit down and, and write the offer together? Or do you want me to put the offer together and then uh, we can sign it at Starbucks? Right. And it's like, you know, I, that's an alternate choice close. And it's like, you want to do it together now or you want to do it together in 10 minutes. Right. Um, and so I think that's that's important. And then we there are times that especially, you know, our high I, high S agents, we don't really want to be pushy. We don't really want to be, you know, uh, the ones that are driving action. Uh, we feel like that's not the right thing to do. But the reality is our agent, our clients need that from their agent, right? And it is our job to be the one who is driving that urgency sometimes so that they don't miss out, right? Like they hired us as the expert. They hired us as their consultant. And so actually we're not doing our job. We're not coming from care if we're not coming from candor in some of these instances. So we do have to highlight the drawbacks of waiting or missing out, right? That opportunity cost. We have to account for that, right? We all went to real estate school at Old Car. The A in is accounting, right? Like we've got to do that. We have to say, if you wait, I don't know, right? And it, uh, a lot of times I'll say, if I didn't have to have this conversation, I wouldn't, because this is really, you know, it's not how I wanted this day to go. But the reality is, I don't know that we're going to find another one like this. And I really want to see you guys win. You know, yeah, I, I really like that script that you said. If it's number one on our list, it's probably number one on someone else's mm -hmm. list. Like the second you said that, I felt it in my heart. And I was like, oh, you're right. Because I got good taste. Thanks for letting me know that, Casey. Right. Um, I like that. And then another thing you said was, uh, well, what I heard was manage the emotions by setting up the next steps. We are in a highly emotional market, especially with sellers. So managing the next steps. And sometimes that is having that pricing conversation on the front end and saying, you know, the, and price is a moving target mm -hmm. today, you know, that 430 may work. And if everyone, you know, drops their price $5,000 tomorrow, if 20 more houses come on the market in this radius, right. Mm -hmm. um, you and I can have that win-win conversation to make sure that you stay competitive. Um, so I love that. And then Sarissa in the chat had said, uh, uh, about like the opportunity available to some of our buyers that weren't wasn't available. Um, go to your filters today. Go to filter. Go Brivity. Filter your buyers from like I don't know whatever you that like in Austin for example maybe three to four hundred thousand. These folks had no fighting chance in the last year. Today they do get you some of that. Like I mean it is awesome, super awesome for them to have this opportunity. Um, were you going to say something, Sarissa? No. Never mind. I'm just, um, yeah, some neighborhoods right now, guys, like we still feel, um, you know, two months or less of inventory in most neighborhoods. I was looking at one in particular this past week. It had 10 months of inventory in one particular neighborhood. And I thought, and I, obviously me knowing that allowed me to go to that other agent and say, Brenda, we have, you have 28 homes you're competing with right now. You have 10 months of inventory. She's smart. Like, and so it allowed me to kind of go, here's why our offer is what it is. We're not trying to be insulting, but we have choices. And so, um, yeah, we just also know your numbers when you're negotiating, because you can come from a position of power and, um, not to be ugly with it, but to bring awareness of bringing them to the situation that is reality. I love that right on right. And I saw your hand. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's something that Jim touched on. Uh, and one of the most powerful tools that I think we have as a team is uh, in the changing market, testimonials are going to be super powerful, right? So we've just all heard it now, right? Sarissa's team is getting them 300 to 450. Adelina, I know you guys are primed back into that market. We just got FHA down payment assistance offers accepted. Use that, borrow that as you're building rapport with them, right? So that they don't feel alone because they're gonna be getting this information from Facebook, the news, their grandma who was a realtor 40 years ago or whatever, right? And they're gonna they're gonna be coming from scarcity, right? They're not gonna understand the abundance that they are able to move through right now because they're thinking this hurdle is six feet high when really it's not for us. If we give them the right data, they'll be able to kind of see that path to their preferred future without as many encumbrances. Uh, but if we could share those testimonials 
and let them know like, hey, look, we had clients that felt exactly the way you felt. And when we worked out the numbers, it fit in their budget. And we just got four people under contract with down payment assistance. This is a great opportunity for you and people like you who don't wait for their goals are the people who win in markets like this, right? That'll give them some confidence to move forward. And if we could borrow some, and it doesn't matter which team we're borrowing it from, if we could borrow those testimonials, that's the confidence and empowerment that our clients should expect from us. They don't because of the gap in our industry, right? But we could close that gap for our clients. So right now we're freaking pumped in San Antonio. Like there's opportunity everywhere. The two main reasons people didn't buy houses or transact in the last 12 months was what? Sellers couldn't find the house they wanted because it was too competitive and inventory was low. Buyers couldn't get a win. With inventory up, those two things are kind of off the table in some of our neighborhoods, right? At least they're less. We should be telling them that stuff, right? And now's a great time. You can sell for top dollar and probably get a decent deal, right? A decent deal was 50K above asking six months ago. Now it's asking price. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, well, let's move forward, right? So yeah, we're jacked. So yeah, if you're in the office with us every day, we're freaking, our energy's up. <laughs> I love that, I love that. What we're doing is changing the narrative, right? Like what buyers are hearing is interest rates are up. Is that the only narrative? No, right? There are so many opportunities. You don't have to have $50,000 on top of appraisal to have to put down, right? Sellers, all they're hearing is inventory went up, prices are going down. Is that the only narrative? No, we just had the best two equity years ever in the like history of time that they get to take advantage of. That hasn't changed. Dana, saw your hand. Hey, so I want to tell everybody about something that took me several years to understand. And um, I still battle this all the time, but our emotions are fixing to get higher and we're going to take some things personally. Like when we get a low offer, we're going to be like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe somebody even had the audacity to send that over. And I experienced this more with like repairs. And so I can't believe that somebody's going to ask for $1,500 worth of nitpicky repairs. And um, my first piece of advice is don't respond to the agent or don't respond um, to the situation until you've cooled off call one of your teammates, vent to them, get their reaction. Cause half the time their reaction is not your reaction. And then once you're cooled off um, and you're a neutral attitude, um, call your clients and say, Hey, good news. We, we've got the repair request and then tell them what it is. And I've experienced half the time the clients are like, Oh, we were fearing way worse. So yeah, like we can do that. And then the whole situation's over and you're like, I got worked up over nothing. Um, but I, I see a lot of that coming and, um, my main piece of advice is don't react while your emotions are high. Like it's okay to not respond for 30 minutes. Oh my God. Okay. So yes, be careful what you get worked up over. Um, there's a lot of you on this call that are awesome. What makes you awesome is you respond instantly. Do that please with leads. Now, when your client sends you something and like two seconds later, you're like, you want to respond and you're like, go to Sarissa, go to Jim, go to Casey, go to everybody. And you're like, getting, you're like, oh, I got to respond right now. It's like, whoa, settle down, get to neutral. Nobody's expecting a 30 minute response from you. Um, and, and by the way, during your time blocks, that's what's, what's holding you back right now. Um, I love that. Um, there's a script I heard, we can end on this. There's a script I heard um, that I really liked. So when I say this script, just, uh, Dana, did you have something to say? I'm so sorry. I think I probably cut you off. I just saw, nope, you're good? No. Okay, cool. All right, don't wanna leave anybody hanging. Um, when I say the city Austin, you just replace it with El Paso or Dallas or San Antonio, wherever, Midland. Um, so the script went something like, Prices in Austin are not dropping. The median price dropped. When the median price drops, that tells us that fewer properties on the high end are selling. Now, high end properties are still selling, but when less of them are selling in these big price points, it affects the median price. 
So when you hear that prices are dropping, they're not. The median price is dropping because there are less Uber luxury homes selling. Prices themselves are actually increasing. They're increasing at a slower pace than two years ago. However, they're still increasing and there is no probability that prices are dropping. So like, just be like, channel your inner Brandon and buy what you're selling, right? Like everybody on this call is like, I gotta get to San Antonio, I gotta be on Brandon's team because I felt that energy. Like you gotta feel that energy about pricing when you go to listings, you gotta feel that energy about buyers when you show them homes, right? In the last shift, um, my number one tactic, and I, I don't remember the last time in the last shift that like I didn't personally sell over 100 homes, like not my team, myself, right? The number one tactic I used, I just wrote this down. When I listed a house, I looked at a one mile radius. I wanted to be the house that the comp that was the best condition compared to mine I was 5,000 under it. I always wanted to be 5,000 under the best comp. Did, did that mean that I was going to be the cheapest house? No, because I'm not, it's not about being cheap. It's not about being the lowest price. It's about being based on my condition and the one that's closest to me. Am I under that price? If I am, guess who gets to sell first? Because they're going to look at both of us. And same condition, I'm lower price. They're going to choose me. Same condition, I'm higher priced, they're gonna choose them. It's really, really that simple. Um, and you'll sell a lot of houses that way. Um, okay, next week, we have a treat for you. Um, Maria, who you all know, uh, for the first time, Maria and Ashley have hit a million dollars in GCI between June, 2021 and June, 2022. So they have 12 month rolling of a million dollars for a team within a team. And they're already ahead of pace for this year. So they'll, you know, God willing, we'll hit a million dollars probably by like mid-October for a calendar year. Uh, but I just want to take you through that journey. want you to have questions available. So that's what I'm telling you ahead of time, what to be expecting. And then come in the near future, we will have Mr. Jim uh, for expired uh, script map. Uh, so a lot of cool things happening. It is still so much year left. Let's make these 20 weeks count like crazy. Get that momentum going right now so that November, December, January are some of your best months. Have a good rest of your week, guys. Thank you so much, Jim and Sarissa and Casey and Brandon and Dana and everybody who shared this morning. Appreciate you guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye,